So this is gonna be the part two video of this vertical log splitter build. Uh, everything you see here, I got done in the first video. And then we needed to figure out a bunch of things, mostly the hydraulic parts side of things. So we got, uh, we got some stuff ordered and that should be here shortly. But in the meantime, I wanna get this engine mounted on the front here on the tongue. Um, I got some plates cut for the back. It's gonna be like a backstop on this table. Um, this is going to be the splitting wedge. This came off the my old splitter. Um, it's a pretty thick piece. It's like inch and a half, so I'm going to make the wedge out of that. And then that's going to go right here on this forklift mast. Um, can mount the cylinder in there. i got to figure that out. Still need to get a cylinder for the log lift. Got to modify the oil tank. Uh, still a lot to do. This is the cylinder from my old splitter. I didn't think I'd be able to use it, um, but I, I think I can make it work. So I'm waiting on a seal kit for it because we got to take it apart anyway. So we're going to redo the seals and then I'm going to figure out how I can make this work. We had to take it apart because our plan is to, I got to cut off these bungs, these fittings, and then I'm going to weld in some bigger ones. These aren't big enough for the, uh, the flow that we want. We want this thing to be pretty fast. So I'm going to cut those off, weld in some one inch or three quarter uh, fittings so we can get the flow we want. So we got our first batch of treats here. What's in the first batch of treats? 
Um, is that filter big enough? Yeah, really big hydraulic filter, uh, tank breather filter. We, I opted to get like a, a tank breather like this with a filter because we're using that fuel tank. And we gotta see if that threads in. I gotta see if it threads in, if not we'll weld a bung, but uh, the fuel tank doesn't have like the vented cap on it and it'd just be easier to utilize the cap that's on the tank. So mm -hmm. this style of vent. 28 gallon per minute pump. Really not that vast in the hydraulic area, <laughs> but uh, got a little pump. We now. wanna try to make it go fast. That's all we know. So, so we're just, and we have 20 horsepower to play with. So this pump, like according to the book requires 16 horsepower. So I figured we'd just get the biggest two-stage pump that yeah. this certain company sells. And that's what we did. And uh, we're gonna we're just make it work. Make it go as fast as possible, really. But still be strong. So this is what I came up with for mounting the pump. Um, I need to get something machined to fit in this flywheel. There's four threaded holes in there. Some, some uh, round plate machined to fit in there and then with a 5 8 shaft stubbed out and then I gotta line it up with this shaft, it's 5 8 and then get uh, like a rubber coupling, they call it like a Lovejoy coupling. Um, to connect the two. That's the plan. I don't know. This still has to get shimmed up and I got to align it better. I don't know if the vibration of the engine, I got it on some rubber pads and I need to, I probably put the pump on rubber too. I'm not sure how much the engine's going to vibrate and how much that coupler is going to take up. It's meant to take up some vibration and flex. So I'll have to uh, see how that does when it's all mounted. So this is going to be our splitting wedge. It's going to be a big, nice, solid chunk of steel um, that we got to mount, you know, right on this slide in the center somewhere. Not sure I'm going to do that yet, but I got it tacked up real good. And I'm going to drop this off at Andrew's house, actually, because he said he wanted to learn how to stick weld. So this will give him plenty of practice. Um, plus, I don't think my Vulcan's got quite the duty cycle to do that much welding. It's really not that much that we got to fill. I mean, so both sides like that's got to get filled and then we got to grind it to a point. It's probably more grinding than welding, if anything. I'm going to start working on the hydraulic oil tank now. This was a diesel fuel tank. I'm going to try to use it for the oil tank. It's a little bit big, so I want to cut it down. I'm going to cut one end off, shorten it, and then I got to re-weld the end back on. I want to shorten it so it fits in between this, this side of the frame and like this forklift mass there. 
that's really the only good spot I could think to put it. The thing's kind of big now. It's 50 gallons, I think, which it's a lot of hydraulic oil, but, and it would be nice to, the more oil you have, the easier it is to keep it cool. It stays cooler. So I don't know how much I'm gonna lose by shrinking it, but I still think it'll be big enough. I got the Harbor Freight spool gun out. We'll see if I still remember how to use that. And then I had to cut two holes on the top. These existing ones, there was three here. Um, they're too small for what we're using. So I cut out some bigger ones. And then this is three quarter pipe thread bungs. Um, so this one's gonna be for a breather filter and that one's gonna be the oil return back into the tank. And I cut out, uh, I think this is like a three inch, three inch pipe thread insert that I don't have yet. Um, but I cut out the hole and that's for the screened intake a big filter screen goes in there um, that's where it sucks in the oil from so i'm going to weld that up and then it's pretty cool i realized that uh, this fuel tank has this float gauge it tells you if it's full or empty see it bouncing there so i don't see why that wouldn't work with oil in it so that's pretty cool it's kind of ugly I'm not the best aluminum welder it can be frustrating but I think it'll be good enough this tank isn't pressurized or anything so it's pretty I just got to make sure it doesn't leak any oil um, so, but once I get this one's in the mail this bong once I get that welded on there I'm gonna try to find caps for all the holes and then pressure test it to make sure it doesn't leak so I can get this tank mounted now, finally, and then I just got back. Um, I had this machined. I cut a piece of plate and then welded a shaft on there, and then I had a friend machine this down to fit the uh, Lovejoy coupler on. I just got to drill four holes in the, in the plate to bolt it to the flywheel, and then that's how the uh, pump, the hydraulic pump, is going to get driven. I can mount that, too. How was the welding? still warm. Mm. Did you get a lot of practice? Yeah. I'm, uh, you didn't even fill those holes in. Yeah, that's it's really hard to do that with a <laughs> thick welder. <laughs> How much grinding was that? Hey, that is still warm. I Flip it up. Uh, like two hours. That's pretty straight. I think that'll split some wood. Probably. I could sharpen this up some more too, but...
That's the best place I could find to put the fuel tank. I mean, I could have bought another one, but that one was free. It came with the, uh, where I got this engine from, that Toro golf cart. So all those brackets and stuff I just used, I think it'll be all right. It's just a little bit, the, the fuel fill is a little bit far away, but it's not that bad. finally ready to work on the cylinder I have to put all new seals in it and put it back together but before I do that I'm going to cut off these old old inlet and outlet holes and my plan is I got these three quarter inch couplers pipe thread I'm going to cut these off drill a bigger hole and then weld these on there to give us better flow for we got a lot bigger pump than this cylinder was used for previously but i'm not only going to do that i'm gonna i'm gonna cut these right in the middle and i can get so i can have four i only have two of them but i need four total so they're a coupler so they got they're threaded on each side so i'm going to slice it right down the middle and i'm going to weld one where the old ones were but i'm also going to drill new holes and weld on the other side and I'm gonna just plug them for now and we're probably just gonna plumb into one, but I don't know if any of you guys have seen a lot of the mainstream, uh, like Easton Made and Wolf Ridge, a lot of the big name log splitters. I haven't seen them in person, but on pictures, I've noticed a lot of them have double ports where they're plumbed into. I don't know exactly where those run. It kind of looks like some of them just run right back to the oil tank so they can get rid of fluid quicker. I don't know if it's on the return or the stroke. But uh, we're gonna figure that out later, but now is the time to do it. So I'm gonna weld, so we have four bungs in here. I'm just gonna plug those ones and use the two. But so for future, uh, future development, we can use those. This hole is like three eighths. So for whatever reason, they made the hole in the tube smaller. So this big fitting, I guess is just for connecting the hoses. I don't know why those are a little bit smaller. So that's a 3 8 hole. I think I'm going to drill them out. I can only go so big. I think I'm going to drill it out to like 5 8 because I got to be careful. I can only go so big because when the, the, ins the rod hits inside, the fluid is got, the hole's got to be behind this. I don't know what you call it. I'm not a hydraulic guy, but the fluid's got to come behind this rod to push it. If I drill it too big, I don't know what'll happen if the fluid gets in this in this part. So I gotta try to cheat it that way. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do there yet. Same thing with the front. The front sits like that and the fluid's gotta, can't, I don't think it's it can go past that part um, with my hole. I gotta make sure my hole's that way of the, uh, where the fluid's gotta go. So I'm not sure how I'm gonna do that yet. I think I have a little room on the back though to, oblong the hole that way. I got my holes drilled out, my four bungs cut. I tried to make them, tried my best to make them right across from one another in the same exact distance. I feel, feel okay about it. I got scared. I went with the 916 hole. I got scared about making it too big. So hopefully that doesn't cause a problem.
So I just finished welding these. It's looking pretty gnarly with the four bungs on there. The reason I TIG welded it is because I can control the heat a little better. I didn't wanna, I didn't wanna change the shape of this. I'm hoping it still seals right. I can control the heat better and I'm pretty confident I got good penetration. So we gotta make sure there's no burrs in here. And then uh, Andrew, I think, is gonna put it back together and so I can finally get it installed. I got this cylinder figured out finally and mounted. Um, it was a lot more, there was a lot more going on than I thought there would be. So I had to build this kind of big horseshoe thing out of a uh, five eighths thick plate I had laying around. So I built this super strong horseshoe because I needed to extend this carriage for this cylinder to work. So it turned out pretty good. I'm happy with it. I think it'll be strong enough and um, it's not like crazy far down. So that's maximum stroke. The only kind of issue is I didn't think about that's stroked out right there. And I thought about it, but I forgot about it when I was mounting this wedge. I had intended for to mount the wedge a little lower, but I guess I forgot. So there's like, I don't know, three inches there or something, um, which isn't a huge deal. There's like three, there's like four inches, which it's not a huge deal. Um, but every once in a while you get a stringy log or it'd be nice to get, I would be happy with one inch off the table. So I don't know what I'm going to do yet. I don't really want to cut this apart. I'm happy with this mount up here. That's nice and strong. And then that would actually, that would be the only thing I could change. I would have to lower that to get more stroke or lower this wedge. But I have this nice and centered and it's not fully welded yet, but I, I gotta think about it. I don't know if I'm gonna fix it yet. I might just run it for now. I think the first thing I would do, instead of cutting anything apart, I think I would weld two more plates on this wedge on a little bit sharper angle, you know, to meet down to an inch or two off the table. I think that's, I think I'm just going to run it and then if it becomes an issue, I would probably weld that up because this was a kind of a hassle to get this tacked and fitted up right and it rides up and down nice, the cylinder's nice and tight with the new packing in it. So we're getting a lot closer, but I'm going to end this video here. We just ordered a ton of new parts. Um, this whole project I think took a lot longer than we thought, but we're getting pretty close. So. Uh, it's coming together and uh, stay tuned for part three.